All right. Good morning and welcome to Friendship. We are so glad that you're here and worshiping with us this morning. Uh, we are glad that you're following along online also. So uh, we are still connected even though we are divided. A few announcements, guys. Don't forget that the Friendship Store is not going to be open this week, July, 20, uh, July 4th. We know that many of the volunteers and employees are going to be celebrating the 4th of July just like many of you. Uh, this is our time to worship, and we are glad that you're here. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning and for bringing us together for worship. We may be disconnected uh, through space, but we are connected through you. Lord, we ask that you watch over this worship service, watch over the people here and those who are not. Uh, strengthen this church. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
To God be the glory. If you will, go ahead and stand for our affirmation of faith, which is found on 881 in your hymnal, or you can follow along on the screen. We will be doing the Apostles' Creed. Will you please join me in this historic affirmation of Christian faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. or something. 
something that we can feel. But yet, Abraham trusted God, and he couldn't even see God. Abraham was Isaac's father. Abraham and his wife Sarah were almost 100 years old when Isaac was born. That's pretty old, isn't it? God told Abraham that he was going to have lots and lots of grandchildren and great-grandchildren through his son Isaac. One day, God spoke to Abraham and told him to take Isaac up on a mountain and give God the thing that Abraham loved more than anything else. So Abraham took Isaac, and they started up the mountain. On the third day, Abraham told Isaac that they were going to build an altar and offer a sacrifice to God. Isaac said to his father, We have the fire and we have wood here, but where is the lamb for the offering? Abraham answered his son and said, God will provide the lamb. They kept walking until they arrived at the place where God told them to go. Then Abraham built the altar and arranged the wood around it. Abraham was ready to give God the thing he loved the most, his son Isaac. Then Abraham looked over and saw a ram um, stuck in his uh, in a thicket by his horns. So Abraham took the ram and offered it to God as a sacrifice. Abraham had faith in God and trusted him completely. And God provided the lamb, just as he told his son that he would. When we put our trust in God, he always provides. Okay, guys, let's pray. Dear Lord, God, we thank you for this day, Lord, and for all our many blessings. We thank you for this story, Lord, of Abraham and Isaac, and the many lessons that it teaches us. God, I pray this week that we put our whole trust in you, Lord, for when we trust in you, we will never be disappointed. We love you so much. Amen. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, y'all. Good morning. I'm so glad. So good you had to see it twice. <laughs> we are glad that you are here together worshiping. And as we are here together worshiping, we can also be here together praying. Uh, we know that there are some concerns within our community, and we know the concerns of our nation. We know the concerns of our congregation, so we need to make sure that we lift up each and every person that is here and afar. Uh, we do know that there are some in our congregation who have lost loved ones, so we lift up those families today. We also lift up those families who are seeking healing for uh, surgeries that have passed and those who have uh, already experienced healing, so we are thankful for those. Will you pray with me now? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that our voices are heard by you. That even when we do not speak, you know it on our hearts. Lord, we thank you that you are a God that never forsakes us, never leaves us, but is always present. Lord, we thank you that even in these uncertain times, that you lift us up. That when we seek you and your courage, Lord, that fear will never overcome us. Lord, as we go about our days and, and we see the state of our country, we see the, the state of the people that surround us, Lord, let us represent you first and foremost. Don't let us get caught up in the worldly thought. Lord, it is so easy right now to be discouraged. So, Lord, let us be people of faith, people of healing, and not people of disruption. Lord, we know that throughout these days, you have always been with us, that we weren't by ourselves. And we remember that as we pray together that prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Typically at this time we would be taking up an offering, but we are unable to do that today. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that. But the offering plates are located at the front and the back of the church. And you can also give through our online portal, Givelify.
Amen. Great singing, guys. Great singing. I, I kind of, when I was sitting there in Valdosta, we had camp meeting days, and it was at Camp Tiger. And I'm sure y'all went to Dooley Campground or something like that around here. And you'd have camp meeting, and it was always in August for some reason when the gnats are the worst, and it was the heat. And, but that song, oh, man, it takes me back to sitting at Camp Tiger and uh, just just enjoying the... Uh, nature and we have some gnats in here so it really made me feel like we were there so uh, we are glad that you are worshiping with us as you can see we are are subtly getting back to normal guys you just got to have patience 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 Uh, that that is a word and a skill that we are all learning these days Uh, nothing moves as fast as it used to and nothing is as like as like as it used to Uh, but we are getting to that point So if you would like to open up your Bibles, or if you've got your phone, you can open up your Bible app and turn to Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. And offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and we will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and knife. So the two of them walked together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. My son, so the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But then the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide, as it is said, To this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Uh, This is one of the most controversial and one of the most well-known parts of the Bible. God asks Abraham to take his only son up to a mountaintop and sacrifice him. People find it hard to believe that God... A God that is so loving would ask anybody to do that, to kill a child. In fact, this is so controversial that many youth pastors and children pastors, they try to avoid this subject altogether. Parents try to avoid this topic. Bible teachers and scholars, they'll avoid it also. Why would God ask for such thing to be ha- such thing to happen? People get offended at the thought and avoid this story because of it. But what we miss in this story, and we have to pay close attention to, what we miss in this story is the child is never sacrificed. People go on living expecting that this is what happened, that the child was sacrificed. But what we really miss is that the child was never sacrificed. It didn't happen. Today, we talk about sacrifice all the time. But very few of us really know what real sacrifice is. I know that there are those in this room that that they know what sacrifice is. They've done the sacrifice, but 
do we really know what it means? Have any of us truly experienced walking with our son to raise a knife above him? I, for one, do not know the extent of this sacrifice. I've never had to make it. I've never been asked to make it. And I'm thankful that I haven't. Who are we, though, to define what a sacrifice is and what a sacrifice is not? Who are we to say what it means? My definition of sacrifice is not the same as another person's definition of sacrifice. What is a sacrifice to you may not be a sacrifice to me. For me, a sacrifice is when I don't get my cup of coffee in the morning, right? Oh, when I don't get my cup of coffee, I'm mean, I'm irritable, I am sacrificing so much. But to some of you who do not like the taste, do not like the smell of coffee, it's not much of a sacrifice, is it? To some of you, you may say that what sacrifice is he giving? Unfortunately, though, we have found ourselves in a world today where we have gone into a sacrificial competition. Did you hear that? We have gotten into a sacrificial competition, and this is dangerous because a sacrificial competition can lead and become deadly. People are asking, well, do you see what I'm giving up? People are telling others, this is what I'm getting up. Do you see the sacrifices that I'm making? Are you aware of what I'm going through? That sacrificial competition is not good for anybody and causes nothing more than pain and, de- and can be deadly. I want to ask you today, though, instead of getting into a competition, let's take the time to learn from those sacrifices that we're making, that others are making, that maybe you have made yourself. When we take time not to judge the sacrifices and learn from them, instead, we can find something that is more valuable today. Something that's more valuable than gold. And that's the truth. Oh, how we want the truth today. Oh, how we desire the truth today. I don't know about you, but I thirst for the truth as much as I thirst for my cup of coffee in the morning. I just want to hear those words of truth. See, I'm glad I got an amen person in here. (laughs) We find truth in what we are willing to sacrifice, don't we? When we look at what we're willing to sacrifice, that shows the truth to us. This morning, let's look at this scripture and see where we can find truth in the sacrifice. Sacrifice is not how it impacts you. Guys, pay close attention to this. Sacrifice is not how it impacts you. Sacrifice is how it impacts others. Did you hear that? Too many times we focus on our inward selves and say, look at what I'm sacrificing. But it's so much more than that. How does it affect the people who surround you? Uh, Look at verse 1 and 2. It says, After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. What we have to understand is this sacrifice that was about to be made was something that was given after hundreds of years of crying and seeking. This was his only son. But what I'm about to do is contradict myself because so many people focus on Isaac in this this sacrifice, but this was not about Isaac. This was about Abraham. Isaac was never in any danger. We know that God never intended to kill the child. This was not about Isaac, but this was about how much Abraham loved God. And that's what we have to hear. Abraham trusted God. What we have to understand is that God had bigger plans for Abraham. Abraham was going to be the father of many new nations. 
And God needed to know that Abraham was faithful. You see, this sacrifice was so much more than about Isaac and Abraham. It was about me and you today. It was about the people who surrounded him. The greater need takes greater sacrifice. Uh, so many of you know, I've talked about dieting before in, in the worship service, and you see that I struggle daily with it, right? It's obvious. But I've also realized that if I really want to uh, diet, and if I really want to lose weight, it's going to take a greater sacrifice, right? Right now, and I'm okay with getting rid of a couple of candy bars, but when I start to say, I've got to change my lifestyle to really get to where I want to be, I don't know if I'm ready for a, uh, a, a, <laughs> that kind of life. I'm not ready for that sacrifice, right? Until you're willing to make a sacrifice like that, you won't see the greater change. The greater the need, the greater the sacrifice. Right now, I think of, uh, we're coming up on the 4th of July, and, and for me, that always reminds me of the military, and it always reminds me of those veterans who laid down their life for me and who I am. For me to be able to worship here, for me to go out and watch fireworks, for me to have the freedoms that I have. That was the greater need, the greater sacrifice. When we look at our own personal lives, the greater the need, the greater the sacrifice. And we have to be willing to choose that sacrifice. But what we also have to remember is that it's not about the sacrifice, it's about the provision. Verse 22, verse 7 says, Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, the, bur the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. Oh, what makes a sacrifice a sacrifice is what you're willing to give up and what you're not willing to give up. What makes a sacrifice a sacrifice is the sacrifice that you're making. Something that's vital, something that's important to you, something that you cannot live without. And that through that sacrifice you trust God. That you know that God will provide. But too often, many of us, we get held back by fear. Fear holds us back from making the sacrifices that we need to make in order to serve God as we've been called to serve. Many of you have said, well, why would Abraham dare hold a knife above his son? Because Abraham knew that God would provide. We read earlier in this scripture that Abraham says, oh, God will provide. If God could provide one son for Abraham, why couldn't he provide another? He already proved that age didn't matter. We have to be careful about the language. We have to be careful about our thoughts. We have to be careful about our fear that it does not keep us back, that it does not hold us back. We have never been asked to make that sacrifice, but we are asked to make a sacrifice. We are not of this world, and that is the sacrifice that we make. Remember, as the Bible tells us, that we are aliens in this world. When we are here, we are not of this world. We read in this sacrifice, though, that Abraham is willing to raise that knife. Now, as a father, how hard would it be for you to walk with your son up the mountaintop. I envision him holding his hand, but that's who I am. And I hear him say to his dad, but where, where is the lamb? Oh, the lamb. <laughs> the lamb will be provided. Can you imagine as a father, as a parent, looking at your child, knowing where you're going and what you're doing, and having to respond, the lamb will be provided. 
That's what we're called to do today when, when we're making these sacrifices, when we're becoming a different part of the world, when we're not being dragged in by culture, we're supposed to be able to say to ourselves, the lamb will be provided. God will provide. All we have to do is trust him. But sacrifice takes sacrifice. Verses 10 through 12 says, Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to his, kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay a hand on your, bo- on your boy. Do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Sacrifice takes sacrifice. Can you imagine how Abraham must have felt that as he was handing, he's pulling up that knife, seeing his only son laid right there? Can you imagine the pain and the grief and the guilt that he had within his body? But then can you imagine the relief that he must have felt when God said, do not lay a hand on that boy? You see, God never intended to kill the child. God wanted to see if Abraham was faithful enough to make the sacrifice. If God would, if Abraham would take his son up that mountaintop. Guys, there are so many times that God is asking us to make a sacrifice, but we're unwilling to do it. We look at the mountain and we say, nope, I'm not going up there. We look at the boy and say, no, he's my only son. We hold on to things of the world and instead of saying, God, I am willing I say, God, I am not. And because of that, we never get to experience the fullness of God. We never get to hear God say, do not lay a hand on that boy. We never get to hear God's voice in our head. We never get to feel his presence in our bodies. We never get to know God as close as we could know God because we're not willing to sacrifice Oh, I love Lent. Lent is the 40 days before what? Pop quiz, making sure y'all are still awake. The front part knows it. What about, when is Lent, guys? 40 days before Easter. That's right. And I love Lent, and I love to hear people tell me, what are you giving up for Lent? I personally, I give up sweets, right? Guys, man, that's a sacrifice for me. Can you not tell by my waistline? But I love to hear, especially I love to hear little kids. Well, what are you getting up for Lent? I'm giving up homework. <laughs> Good. That's great. Um, then I've also heard, I'm giving up Target. But in being married now, I understand. That is a sacrifice. I, I truly understand that giving up Target is a sacrifice. And I'm thankful for that sacrifice. My wallet is thankful for that sacrifice. Guys, when we look at sacrifices that way and instead of what we're supposed to do, and we ask ourselves, how far are we really willing to go for God? How much are we really willing to sacrifice for God? We really got to question our faith. We got to question who we are. Would you ever get to the point of raising the knife? If God were to say to you today, raise that knife above that thing that you love the most, would you be willing to do it? Or would you probably be like me and just break down and say, I can't. Oh God, I won't. I pray that you are stronger than me and that you're stronger than most, that you would say, yes, Lord, I'll raise that knife. Knowing that God never intended knowing that God will love you and he will provide. And that's what we've got to hold on to is even in the sacrifice, verse two, uh, verse 14 says, so Abraham called that place the Lord will provide as it is said to, to this day on the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. Why do we hear those words? Why is that mountain named that? Because after he rose the knife and after God said, do not lay a hand on that boy, but what was there in the thicket? to be sacrificed is the ram. The Lord did provide. Do you think that it was happenstance that that ram was there? No. The Lord will provide. 
some may look at this piece of scripture and say, look at what they, the Lord put Abraham through, the pain that he had to go through. Some may look at you and some may look at me and some may think to themselves, why would I have to go through this sacrifice? Why would God put me through this sacrifice? I have to say that in the sacrifices that I've made and none of them have been to this scale. I'm a better person for it. I'm a stronger Christian for it. I'm a better believer because of it. And I have to say that because of that experience, when Abraham raises that knife, he is a better man for it too. Today, as, as we think about the sacrifices that we've made, the sacrifices that others have made, the truth we find in this scripture is that Abraham loved and trusted God so much that he would sacrifice his only son for God. Does that sound familiar to you today? What are you willing to sacrifice? The truth is in what you are. What do you hold so dear that you're willing to remove so that you can be closer to God? Oh, in the struggle that we face today, we desperately desire the truth. But what we have learned is that the world is not providing it. So what do we do but trust in God? That when we raise that knife, He will say, I have provided. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here. Lord, we thank you that sacrifices have been made, that, that people are, have been willing to sacrifice so that I can stand here, so that we can sit there, so that we can worship together. Lord, we are not ambiguous to the sacrifices that have been made. Lord, we know the cost. We know the price. But we thank you and we trust you. Lord, we ask that as we go through these days that the sacrifices that we make will bring us closer to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. stand with us.
Are you glad you came to worship? I hope that you are. I hope that you have felt God's presence. I hope that you felt the joy that I've had just being here with you and him. Guys, if only we had more children in the church. There are churches that do not have children. I'm thankful that we do. I would give up that noise. I would never give up that sound of those kids playing and making noise. I have served a church with no children. It's heartbreaking. I would much rather hear that all day. So, as we go from this place now, let us go with the joy that, that's filled in that little man's heart and the joy of a child knowing what has been sacrificed for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. See you all next Sunday.